following absolute value equation that we're going to solve is more of a challenging equation. It has a different setup than what we're used to. We see in this problem the absolute value of x minus 2 equals 2x plus 10. So in this example, we don't just have a number over on the right side. We actually have also a variable term. We have a variable on the left side and the right side, um, you may say. So this one may look different than what we were used to. But we're going to try and see, can we use the same idea as before in order to solve it? So the first thing that we do when solving the absolute value equation is you drop the absolute value bars and set it equal to the expression on the right, which is 2x plus 10. And then when we created the second equation, we dropped the absolute value bars, but we always set it equal to the negative of the term on the right-hand side. If this was x minus 2 equals, let's say, 10, you would set 1 equal to 10 and then 1 equal to negative 10. But this time we actually have the expression 2x plus 10. So when you are using the absolute value, and set it equal to the negative, you need to do the negative of the entire expression, which really means you have to take the negative of both terms. So if we apply the same approach, it's just now rather than taking the negative of just one of the terms, you have to take the negative, the opposite of both of the terms. And then let's just solve and see what happens. So we would subtract x from both sides for this first equation. That's going to give me negative 2 equals x plus 10. And then if I subtract 10, I'm going to get negative 12 equals x. So that means x equals negative 12. For this other equation, I'm going to go ahead and add 2x. So I work with a positive coefficient for my variable term. So x and 2x is 3x, so 3x minus 2 equals negative 10. Add 2, 3x equals negative 8. And then divide by 3, x equals negative 8 thirds. So we have two answers, and what we need to remember is what we've gone on before. We need to check our solutions. Some solutions may work, and some solutions may not work. So we're going to have to make sure that all of our answers, x equals negative 12, and our answer, x equals negative 8 thirds, either they're both going to be right, one may be right, the other may not work, or they both may not work. So let's actually plug in to the equation and see what we get. So let's plug in negative 12 first. So if I take the absolute value of negative 12 minus 2, is it going to be equal to twice negative 12 plus 10? So negative 12 minus 2 is negative 14. So I have the absolute value of negative 14 equals negative 24 plus 10. Absolute value of negative 14 is a positive 14. And negative 24 plus 10 is negative 14. So does 14 equal negative 14? The answer is no. And so then x equals negative 12 is not one of our answers. So now we're going to have to do the same thing and check negative 8 thirds. Now this one requires more thinking because we're going to have to plug in a fraction. So we have negative 8 thirds minus 2 in the absolute value is equal to twice negative 8 thirds plus 10. If you were to do negative 8 thirds minus 2, 2 is really 6 thirds. So negative 8 minus 6 is negative 14. So we have the absolute value of negative 14 thirds equals, we get negative 16 thirds multiplying 2 times negative 8 thirds. And I'm going to go ahead and change 10 to a denominator of 3. And so 10 is really 10 times 3, 30 thirds. So negative 16 plus 30 is positive 14 thirds on the right. And the absolute value of negative 14 thirds is positive 14 thirds. So does 14 thirds equal 14 thirds? Yes. And so therefore, negative 8 thirds is our only answer to this one. So even though this looks like a different problem, we have a variable expression on the right-hand side, we're still going to solve it the same exact way. We're going to set up two equations. 
one where we just drop the absolute value bars and work with the expression, and the other where we take instead of just the negative of one number because we had one number on the on the right side before, we're going to take the negative of both terms. If we had three terms, we would take the negative of all three terms. With two terms, you just take the negative of both terms. So we can still approach this problem the same way we've done it before.